As the old saying goes, there are other worlds than these. But in this context, we can use it without getting all emotional after quickly exiting the physical plane. Because in this context, despite all of our hypothetical configuration, what if an object existed that bridged the gaps between these realities? In previous instances, we've spoken at length about the existential implications of being aware of tangents and timelines, offshoots of worlds different to this one. But what if we had the ability to enter and exit them at will? Well, let me introduce you to SCP-093 and hold on because we're about to see exactly how deep the rabbit hole goes. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Live Speakers Questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, what if SCP-093 was real? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 1997 sci-fi Strangeling Contact because, well, if you came here expecting a mind-bending visual depiction of a mirror doing weird mirror-y things, then I've got you. But let's face it, we didn't exactly have an abundance of like-minded clips, did we? Although saying that, SCP-093 would probably make a great movie, so filmmakers, if you're listening, you know what to do. It leads us to an interesting point though, because out of the thousands upon thousands of entries inside the Foundation's fictional containment, 093 is perhaps one of my favourite anomalous entities. Because although it's incredibly in depth and takes a while to sink your teeth into it, it's perhaps the most fully formed entry in the SCP Foundation's canon. And it's a living demonstration not to judge a book by its cover. But first, let's take a look at what all the fuss is about. As the record states, SCP 093, otherwise known as the Red Sea object, is a Euclid class object, primarily a red disc carved from a strange, otherworldly stone material adorned with circular engravings and ancient unknown symbols etched deep into its surface. The object itself was found on the shore of the Red Sea back in 1968 after it caught the attention of Foundation researchers as it was emitting a low sighing sound and a dim blue gleam of light. Strangely, after it was secured, it began shifting colours, varying on those that observed it from an orange mix of red to light violet, yellow and green. Despite this strange phenomenon though, it also had a much more straightforward objective. You see, SCP-093, as if by some anomalous instinct, constantly seeks to attach itself to any mirror or mirror-like surface, and because of that, its special containment procedure is relatively straightforward. Attach it to a mirror, keep an eye on it, and hope it doesn't do any more weird stuff. But yeah, as we all know folks, this is the SCP Foundation, and things aren't ever as simple as that, because when SCP-093 attaches to a mirror-like surface, it has a habit of turning said surface into into a portal to another dimension. And this is where things get really, really interesting because the world that it connects to has some terrifying implications for our civilization, mainly potentially an XK class mass extinction event. But we've come to take that as pretty much a given by now, right? Yeah, let me explain. The thing that makes SCP-093 so damn intriguing are the series of experimental logs that follow it. You see, depending on which color the Red Sea object emits, it changes the exit location of the portal. But as the foundation quickly discovered, the Despite its geographical destination, all of these portals lead to the exact same alternate world. And strangely enough, it's a world not unlike our own, save for one key difference. It's populated by a horde of remotely humanoid anomalous creatures referred to as the unclean that were essentially giant torsos without faces crawling amongst the ruins of the planet. After expending a few D-class personnel before realizing the true extent of SCP-093's wider implications, this strangely familiar civilization had pretty much fallen to ruin by the time that the Foundation began scouting the place out. And it quickly began became apparent that only small pockets of humanity had survived long enough whilst the unclean hunted the population, absorbing them into their anomalous ranks and covering the planet in a strange, dank brown ooze. Oh, and also it seemed that the world had ended in roughly 1953. Go figure. As the truth slowly revealed itself though, it seemed that this oddly familiar world had in fact fallen victim to something much more nefarious. And I'm talking interdimensional, all-powerful, cosmic godlike entities. Now bear in mind that the wider reading for SCP-093 is absolutely huge and there's obviously a lot more to it, but essentially this alternate Earth had been influenced by an outside force that rapidly distinguished it from our own timeline. 
Online. As the records explained approximately 350 years prior, the world of SCP-093 experienced a technological boom that ours did not, thanks to the arrival of a being referred to only as he. He declared that the world was unclean and filled with sin, and the only way to save the planet was to purge the sinners. To prepare for the Great War, he bestowed on them amazing advances in technology and science, but as we so starkly found out, he quickly disappeared, and everything soon fell to ruin after several hundred years and the rise and fall of an oddly familiar yet completely alien civilization to our own. But in this hypothetical scenario, the Red Sea object is our gateway to this strange, brave new world, filled with the ruins of an advanced civilization and giant oozing torsos that eat people alive. I mean, it doesn't exactly sound like the most pleasant of destinations, and we'd perhaps have to strongly debate whether we'd even want to explore this new world in the first place, but we can't deny the fact that this strange new world would be incredibly useful. In fact, why ever settle for one Earth when you could have two? Global warming? No problem, we'll just spend the summer in our new reality. Overpopulation? It's cool, there's plenty of room over in the new place. Ah. Uh. Actually, is anyone starting to get the feeling that this may be a pretty bad idea? In terms of our current technology, it's safe to assume that our civilization could quite capably set up some form of safe base of operations to slowly claim ownership of the unclean world. After all, it is human nature to explore, settle, and populate, right? So why would an alternate reality be any different? In fact, it's heavily implied in the records of SCP-093 that the unclean world had knowledge and a technological grasp on other realities too accessed again by the anomalous powers of the Red Sea object. In fact, before the whole world was consumed by the giant ravenous torso monsters, the few remaining devout loyalists tried to flee through a different portal. That's before it all went Pete Tong, of course. But also, it poses the question, how did the Red Sea object end up in our dimension then? Well, that's because the previously mentioned all-powerful entity uses the anomalous properties of SCP-093 to surf between realities, corrupting countless alternate civilizations through his twisted, perverse games. In fact, at the downfall of the unclean world and the realization that they'd been corrupted by this god, it took one brave soul to break up the Red Sea object into circular fragments of itself, tossing it through the dimensional doors, haphazardly landing in our reality back in 1968. In the hope that it'd lock him away forever. Well, if that's the case, maybe we should cancel those plans to reclaim and populate a second Earth, shouldn't we? Yeah, actually, let's just keep it locked up. That's probably for the best, isn't it? After all, the thought of getting visited by an all-powerful, reality-hopping, godlike alien entity that wants to punish us all for our sins and turn us into the unclean doesn't sound like the best of times, does it? After all, do you know what they say? Don't go poking your head in pools because you never know what's lurking on the other side. Well, there we have it, our hypothetical cautionary tale on what not to do if SCP-093 was real. Don't go through the pool. What did you guys think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as your hypothetical play-by-play -play on the inner workings of the Red Sea object. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Avery the Cuban American says, What if aliens escape from Area 51? <laughs> what are you talking about, Avery the Cuban American? Everyone knows there's there's no aliens at Area 51. Of course not. That'd just be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's life's biggest question. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just LBQ in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied flowing voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy.